Hello. Studio Press have promised to make the Genesis sample theme and the Genesis framework free after the 8th of June in 2021. So this is the sample theme, but it works with Genesis blocks. Now I've made two videos showing you how the sample theme works. In this video, I want to show you how Genesis blocks, this is the free version of Genesis blocks. I want to show you how this works because it's a really big part of making a good looking professional website using the Genesis framework and the Genesis sample theme. So this is an empty page using the Genesis sample theme. Now, first of all, I want the layout of full width content. So this is the Genesis tab here and I've chosen layout full width content. I've also ticked the box that says hide title. And if we click the WordPress settings cogwheel, I'm using the default template there. So under the Genesis button, we want the full width content and we want to hide the title. So I'll go back to the WordPress settings tab there. So we can see the page and block settings. Now I'm using a page template, not a post template. So this is a page I'm making. And at the top of the post editor, there's this layouts tab. So I click that and I've got choices of page sections, page layouts or collections. Now there's only one collection in the free version of Genesis blocks. So I've got layouts, which are full pages, which are great for making things like your contact us page or an about page. These are ready made complete pages. There's also a home page and an alternative home page and a services page. So that's the layouts tab, but there's a sections tab. In the sections tab, these are all individual page sections that you can put together like a jigsaw puzzle. So you just choose which ones you need and then you add them to your page. Now, first of all, I'm going to use this slate hero with buttons. Just add it to your page like that. Now, I think the text is too big for mobile devices. So I'm going to just make that text smaller. So I just click inside the text and instead of 60, I'm going to set it to 40 or 42 I'll have, which is a bit better when you're using a, a mobile phone. So, so many people use phones now. Now to add another block, that's just one block I've got in the page. To add another one, I click layouts again. And this next layout will be added underneath the one I've already put there. I want to add this one next. So I just click this layout and it's added under the one I already had. So I just click layouts again. And the next one I add will be added yet again underneath. So I want to add this one. It's added there. So the important point to remember is you need to decide on your layout before you start building the, uh, the page, because each time you click the layouts button, the next section of your page will be added beneath the one you've just added. Now, what you can do, if you select the outer div there, you've got these little icons move down. So you can rearrange them once you've built your page, but it's best to build it the way you need it to start with. Now I've added some more blocks to the page, some more rows, um, because I want to show you how they work. I'll just show you what I've done so far. I've added these extra blocks to the page. Now, now, if you want to, you can open this ad block, scroll to the bottom and see all the Genesis blocks that are available. And you can actually build your own layouts using these individual blocks. Now to start with, I would use the ready-made ones, but when you get used to it, if you learn how the advanced columns block works, you can build all kinds of quite complex layouts. I'm not doing that at the moment, but what you, what, you might want to do, suppose I wanted to add a pricing table above this 
section, click the section, click the three dots, insert before, and what I want to do now is type a forward slash, and I know I've got a pricing table option, so search, then add it to your page. And if you want to move it down, just click the move down arrow. And if I open up the WordPress settings, select this, I can actually add more columns. I want to change the width. You can edit these. There's quite a lot of options. You can change the color and the background and things like that for the pricing table. Now what I want to do now is change some of the images. Now there are a few different types of images. This has got a background image. So if I click right in the corner, and then that's open up the block settings in the sidebar. Make sure the WordPress settings tab is open. I'm in the block settings in the sidebar. If I scroll down, I've got background image settings. So click right in the corner, open the background image options, and you can click this button to open the media library and change the image. This image here, it's got a replace button. So if I just click that, that will open up the media library again. Or I can upload an image. Now these with a little plus icon, just click the image and that opens the media library. So you can replace the image. Same again, just because the little plus icon there, click the image and you can replace it. Now these are blog posts. If you click this, it's the post and page grid. So to change these images, because these are blog posts, so it's a featured image from blog posts, you would have to edit the blog post and change the featured image on that blog post. So I would have to Edit the blog post. And change the featured image. Replace the image there. So I'll click the update button then I can go back to where I started from. See what else we've got. I've got to edit the page. Now this block looks like blog posts, but it's not. It's actually a layout that's built from an image, a headline, and text and a button. So although this looks like a blog post, it's not. And on this one, if I click the image. I've got two buttons. I've got the replace button, but I've also got this anchor button. And if you see this anchor button, these images are coming from the Studio Press website. They're, it's called hot linking, and they're actually on the Studio Press website. But if I click this anchor button, the, the anchor button will only appear on a few images. But if you see the anchor button, if you click that, it will replace this hot linked image with an actual image on your web server. It'll download the image to your web server. So now that image is actually inside my WordPress website. This one is still hot linked from the Studio Press website. So that's got an anchor type button. This one doesn't. And there's also the replace button. So you could just replace the image. But if you want to use the images that are actually part of the layouts that you've used, you, you can get at some of them in that way. It just saves you a, a little bit of messing about. Now with buttons, if you triple click the text, you can change the text. 
and this little icon here will open up the link text so you can type your link in there or paste it in. Then once you've pasted your link in there, remember to click this arrow that submits or adds the link, and makes it actually active. But whichever, whatever you want the link to link to, just paste your link in there. You can actually search. If you want to add a link to a page on this particular website, it will link to the about page. Now to change any of the text, triple click the text and just type in your own text. Works the same with paragraphs. Now that won't work on the blog post listing. This because these are actually blog posts. These are imported into this section using the post and page grid layout. But these are actually blog posts. So the only way to change these would be to open that blog post and change the text on that blog post. Now, as your web page becomes more and more complex, it becomes more difficult to navigate around the different blocks. The easiest way to do it is to click somewhere inside your page, wherever you want to edit, and then use these breadcrumbs at the bottom of the page. Or you can use this outline tool here to navigate around your page. It takes a bit of tinkering to get it right, but the bread I like using the breadcrumbs because it's the easiest way to select different things on your page. I've got the breadcrumbs down here. Anyway, that's all we need to know. If you learn those few skills, you'll soon be able to make really good looking web pages using the Genesis Blocks plugin. Once you get used to this, it's a really good plugin. It's simple and it's very clean. And it makes professional looking web pages in literally minutes. How do you delete all the content and start from scratch? I've now got a page full of blocks. And you could delete each block one by one, but it would take a long time. So I'm going to edit the page. Now, there's three little buttons here. It's the options buttons. Click that, and then I want Code Editor. And I click inside the code, Control A to select everything, and then you can press Delete, or I'm going to use Control X to cut it. Exit the Code Editor, and it's all gone. The page is empty. Because I cut it, I could save it as a text document in case I want to reuse that code that I've just cut. Or I could even paste it back if I open the code editor. It's all back there again. But the important point is these three little buttons, options, code editor, select all, cut or delete and you're back to an empty page, you can start again. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching, bye for now.